All right, appreciate y'all joining us today. Uh, excited about getting back into the flow of a game week. Um, enjoyed getting to watch other people play football the last couple Saturdays and second guess all their bad decisions. But um, anyway, so we, we had a good week of work. Uh, hopefully some recovery was involved for our guys. Really gave them the majority of the weekend off and practiced last week towards finishing the, the last four games of this regular season the right way as we propel into what what is uh, postseason after that. So just really focused on getting better in some areas that we need to improve, and then also maybe some unique things that we're about to face here the next few weeks. So uh, wrapping up the previous game, because I have not announced players of the game from the previous game, uh, offensive player of the game was Austin Stidham from Russellville, Alabama. Austin also was a National Football Foundation finalist uh, for the Campbell Trophy that, as announced last week. Uh, so he'll be recognized in Las Vegas in December for that award, really prestigious academic award that he that he uh, is in contention for. Defensive Player of the Week, Reddy Stewart, had the interception in the game. I uh, have to mention, Reddy is from Austin High School in Decatur, Alabama. That's my father-in-law's alma mater. So got to recognize that. Special Teams Player of the Week for us last week was Mike Rivers, averaged 42.8. Uh, four of his six punts were inside the 20. He also got some belt player of the week that week. Um, defensive uh, job taker of the week, Tavares Williams Jr. from Buholes High School in Gainesville. His father, he's a legacy. His father uh, played here as well. Offensive job taker of the week from New Brockton, Caden Cup, also known as Cooper Cup, all right, in, in our program. Uh, and then special teams job taker of the week, Jaden Wilson from Pike County High School right down the road here in Brundage. Um, and then the Nathan Harris John Johnson Service Award goes to Rajay Johnson. And then the Corey McClellar Spirit Award goes to Gunner Watson. So Gunner did a great job, just attitude, energy, um, his whole approach in the last couple weeks. So those are the guys recognized from the previous week. Um, moving ahead, got a really good challenge in Louisiana Lafayette on the road. Um, they've sort of been the class of the Sun Belt West the last several years and have been the top team in the league. Still a really talented team. Um, have lost a couple close games, uh, it, but they, they still uh, are, are a really good challenge for our, our guys to get ready for. Um, last couple outcomes against them for us have not been good. They beat us last year here at home 35-21. to 21. <laughs> 2019, we went down there and we lost 50 to three. So uh, last time I checked, everybody, you know, everybody wants to pat us on the back and act like we've done something. We've won six games. We hadn't beaten Louisiana Lafayette in a really long time around here. So that's a, a really uh, a big test for us, and we're ready for it. Um, I think our guys will be mentally prepared and locked in, but we've got a good opponent that we better be prepared for. We'll get exposed um, defensively. They create a lot of takeaways, really talented, great length and speed, a lot of athleticism on that side of the ball when you watch them. Offensively, I think they've settled in with Ben Woolridge, number 10, being the quarterback. Uh, up until last week's game, he had 10 touchdowns and one interception, so he's played high-level football. Their receiver, number eight, Michael Jefferson, he's a big play waiting to happen. I mean, he's averaged over 20 yards per catch and in several other games this year. He's a really good player. And the return game, Eric Gare, number seven, who's also a corner for them from Mobile, uh, is a dangerous return man. So a lot of good players, a lot of guys that have that have played a lot of football there um, on really quality teams for them. A, a tough road environment for us. Uh, our guys got to get uh, fully ready to be engaged, to you know, focus on this game. It's the only game that matters all year right now. It's the only one we got. So uh, with that, open it up for questions. Yeah, you don't have to look very far in college football to see, you know, upsets happen. Um, I tell our team all the time, I'm pretty good at helping keeping them humble. Uh, I remind them almost daily that we're good enough to beat anybody we play, and we're also bad enough to lose to anybody we play. Uh, in this game, you have every seven days, I say this a lot, you have every seven days to be promoted or exposed. And there's no such thing as like, 
well, we beat this team so we can beat that team in college football. And if you think the quantum leap of you can just press the button and move forward to four weeks from now and get the, the reward or the prize that you want, you will be sadly mistaken. So I talk to our guys a lot about running the race the right way. Don't worry about the prize. Like what comes four, five, six, eight weeks from now does not matter. What matters today is that at Troy, we have the best Monday in all of college football on October 31st. And if we do that, and do that every day for the next month or so, then we got a good chance of uh, maybe accomplishing some big goals. If we don't, then we're going to be disappointed because you can't worry about things that are too far out in front of you. But this is a very humbling game. If you don't prepare the right way, you'll get you'll get exposed and humbled really fast. Hey, John, it's John Anderson. Uh, I know you weren't real happy with the offense after the South Alabama game. When you went back and looked at the film, where did you see problems and how much did y'all – yeah, I think we were able to clean up some things. You'll, you know, the true test it comes Saturday. You know, when you play the game, that's when you get your real test. But uh, it, schematically, we could do some things. I think to maybe put ourselves in a little bit better position and do some things cleaner. I thought we ran the ball effectively. We ran for over three yards of carry and ran for 131 yards in the game, which is good. Uh, I didn't think we maybe did some things as clean as I'd like in the past game. You know, we've been really good creating explosives in the past game this year, and we struggled to do that in that game, and that was disappointing. Um, to say that I was disappointed in our production in that game would be an understatement. I mean, I, I, I want to win every game we play, and I'll take a win however we can get it. Um, we were playing a good defense, but uh, if we think scoring 10 or 13 points is going to help us go to where we want to go, then we're going to be really disappointed. So we got to be more productive. Um, we we did not play our best football on offense, and I think everybody knows that. And coaches, players alike, we're all we're all ready to respond. Coach, I'm Rollins, Jamal, at, at Dennis <coughs> Montgomery. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we got to talk to you. Last week you had a, a tweet, your rap poison tweet. Uh, could you just explain the meaning behind that? Maybe if you were just trying to keep your guys, make sure, again, that you guys aren't, you know, getting too big ahead, staying focused, you know, one day at a time. Could you just sort of explain that, that tweet? Yeah, I just I, – part of it's a jab at Adam Prendergrass likes to promote all things good that we're doing when I'm like – I watch his practice every day and – we're not as good as maybe some people want to make you believe. But, no, I think we've got a quality team. And, I, and I'm excited about the direction our guys are headed. I also think that you can get very caught up in the positives and everybody patting you on the back. Um, because the same – I mean, look, I love everybody's support and all that. The same people patting us on the back telling us how good we're doing will be the same people dog cussing us when we don't win. And so, uh, for me, I have a – uh, extreme desire to keep our guys focused on what we're in control of, what matters, how do we get better every day. And I, I don't really get caught up in the middle of the year looking up and going, hey, what's what? where are we projected to go to a bowl game? Or uh, what are the, how do we – who has to win or lose or whatever for us to win the – like just do our job, get better today, win today, win tomorrow, win the next – like just focus on each day, the process of getting better, and good things happen. You know, and so, you know, I, I don't know. There's all the, these obscure stats that Adam and people like to put out that are like, you know, after a positive second down, we have a great third down call or something. I don't know. Like, just get better. Like, get better. That's all I want to do is just get better. <laughs> if, we, if we don't get better really fast, we're going to be disappointed in how these last four games go. Like, we're not good enough. I don't care who we play, what what their record. We will get exposed if we don't get better really quickly. And uh, I, I'm I've been pretty on edge and uncomfortable the last two weeks because everybody thinks we've done something we hadn't done anything yet. And then really quickly, Eric Gear I believe uh, has the school record for punt return touchdowns. Mike, of course, won you know special teams player of the week. So what's the strategy going in? Obviously, special teams is such a huge part of the game. You know, and field position could, could mean a lot. I mean, what's how are you approaching maybe punting the ball towards him when he's back there? Yeah, Eric, uh, same high school as Carlton Marshall. Went to McGill Tulin in Mobile. Uh, I've watched Eric since he was in high school. Dynamic in the return game. Really good at corner, too. You've got to be smart about maybe where you punt the ball, 
Uh, you don't always maybe want to punt it right at him, make him work to get to the ball. Um, you also, how you cover it, you know, maybe some formational things you can do. They, they, they do a good job with their pressure on the punt team, too, that helps set up some of the returns. So um, he's a really quality player in the return game and at corner. We've got to do a good job of accounting for how we're going to cover when we do punt and then maybe don't punt it right at him every time. Uh, maybe do some things different, um, just those sort of things that we gotta we got to address. But he's a really good player and dynamic when he gets his hands on the ball. Yep. Yeah, Jabri's out, Medina's out, Jaden's out. Uh, who was the other one you asked? Gransall. Ransall's back. Ransall's fully back. Practiced last week. Uh, looked really good. Probably could have pushed it to play in the previous game. But I knew with the long bye here we had that I was like, let's just – Wait another week, and so he's been—he's probably been a little bit ahead, but I've been—I've been really cautious with him, and so, but he's back. He's looked really good. I'm excited to watch him play. Um, really good player. Look, look forward to him being fully back. But those other three guys, not going to play for a little while still. Um, do you, can you maybe talk just a little bit how you're going to It'll be the same two guys that get the reps mainly with the ones. They both get reps with the ones and the twos. Um, we'll start one of them. If he plays good, he'll play the whole game. If he doesn't play good, then we'll play the other guy, whoever doesn't start. Uh, they're, those guys are awesome. Like, like I, we, you know, we played our last game, and then Jarrett got in the truck and rode back to Georgia with Gunner. Like, and they hung out for the weekend at Gunner's parents' house. Like, those guys, man, you talk about – it's a, it's really easy to coach when you got two guys that play such a critical position that both want the ball and they both would love to be the starter. And we've gone and given them both of them different opportunities and they've both done some good things this year. They both at times could have played better too. They know that. But they've encouraged each other. They've supported each other. Uh, they've been great teammates. It really makes it easy to use an example with the entire roster when you got guys doing that, because uh, you know every other position you got guys complaining about. Well, I want this route or I want this coverage call for me. Watch how we're handling it, quarterback, and how those guys are receiving it and adjusting. But one of them will start the game, and hopefully that guy plays so good that we don't have to play the other one. But if we do, then we do. You know, the only other time I could say I have, that's a good question, was when I was a player in college. Uh, we had Jared Lorenzen and Shane Boyd, both who actually played in the NFL. Uh, Jared lost the job to Shane, and Jared got it back, and they both were always extremely supportive of each other. But that goes back like 20 years ago, you know what I mean? Like, it's such a unique position, and everybody wants to be the man. I can't say I've been around two guys that have handled it with such class and character uh, in a really long time as a coach, at least. I don't know that I have. These guys, they're great, great teammates. They support each other well. Our entire team's behind whichever guy's in the game, and we support whichever guy's not in the game. I love them both. I want them both to be successful. Uh, I could not have asked for two guys to handle that situation better. And I expect them to continue to do so.